Hello and uh, well. Hello reformers and welcome back to Warsword Conquest. I am still sick, a little bit sicker than I was in the previous episode and uh, hopefully we're going to be able to win against these wood elves. There are quite a few of them, as you can see. This is probably our largest battle to date with the exception of the siege that we uh, defended against, of course. And, uh, well, let's have a look. 179 against 175. I am still not fully recovered from the previous battles that we've had because, of course, it's not actually been that long in-game. And so, yes, this might be a bit of an issue considering this is a completely flat battlefield. Do we have a good amount of space back here? Hmm. The space is not exactly great. I mean, I guess I could move some of my forces back. It might make sense, but yes. Anyway, I actually wanted to begin doing a bit of salt trading in my off-screen time, and that just was not really going to work because these guys came on by, and I thought, hey, okay, we're going to tackle them. And uh, usually I would be a little bit wary about tackling such a large group, but I thought considering they are right next to us, this is the best time. This is really the best time to do this kind of thing. And uh, we're going to put our infantry at the front there as well, just to make sure that our forces are a little bit, shall we say, a little bit protected. And uh, I am going to get ready to use Vermintide as well when they get a little bit closer, the opponent, of course. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But I think, how, how many cavalry? No, we only have three cavalry. I thought to myself, oh, I, th I, th I think we have some uh, good numbers in terms of the amount of cavalry that we have. But no, no, it doesn't seem like it. Anyway, you can see here, we've already eliminated 21 of the opponent. And that's pretty good. I, I feel like that's pretty good. You know, that's not, not in incredibly bad. Now, I do need to be a bit careful here, because you can see here the uh, infantry do tend to take quite a battering because, uh, you know, obviously the Wood Elves are very, very good at what they do. You know, they do have those ranged units that are extremely effective. And I'm hopefully not going to get murdered as a result. Seems like they're going... Wow, they are really not doing a very good job at really uh, knowing what's going on, to be honest. There we go. There we go. We're getting some people. Twelve. Twelve clan rats we just spawned into the, uh, to the game world. That's pretty amazing. I like it. Okay, I've got Madness here as well, so technically I could try and get one of them. Oh yeah, there we go. We actually got this guy. Look at that. We got that guy to help us out. And bear in mind, I do have dodge, so I'm going to obviously be able to dodge quite a bit of the enemy's attacks, hopefully. And maybe I'll be able to slash at this fellow. Oh, never mind. He also has a pretty decent dodge rating as well by the looks of things. Ah, that guy doesn't. Certainly. Yes. Take that, scoundrel. And uh, what about this one? This is actually kind of fitting, considering... I mean, these look like reindeer, so, you know, it's about the, about the season for that kind of thing. <laughs> anyway, oh, whoa, that guy's, that guy's literally riding a unicorn. So let's do our best not to kill the unicorn, shall we? I would like to just kill this guy in front of me. Oh, no, the unicorn. Oh, well, never mind. I guess uh, that wasn't really me. I didn't really, didn't really kill it. So I guess that's okay. Ah, I actually got shot by a Shadow Sentinel. Okay, should have taken a healing potion. That's on me, but it's okay. It's okay. I think we actually have a pretty decent shot at winning here, even though we are actually losing quite a few units. I think we'll just retreat here for the moment. And we'll just take stock. And we'll see exactly what has happened here. Okay, so we lost quite a few units. Uh, Poison Wing Globe it is. Doesn't really matter. Warp Lock Engineers, similarly, not really going to matter that much because we do have about 70 to 80 of those guys in the garrison, not the Warplock Engineers, but the Globadiers. And uh, yeah, so there you go. We, 90, 95? We only took out 95? I'm very surprised. Okay, well, let's go back in here. 81 remaining. Ah, this is a much better battlefield, isn't it? This is much better. We are going to be easily able to get a victory here. I was actually looking forward to attaining a victory in the previous round because we would have gained about 30 renown for that, but... Well, beggars can't be choosers, I guess, and uh, this is going to be absolutely fine, I think. Uh, you know, getting 10 renown instead of 30 and not losing as many units, I think that's a worthwhile endeavor. Alright, so you can see here by the spam that most of the enemies now are not even wood elves. You can see here, you know, Chaos Zealots, uh, Dwarf Master Smiths, and so on and so forth are b being eliminated like nothing else. Goblin War Chief, Knight of the Blazing Sun. It seems like they rescued a whole bunch of prisoners from somewhere. And speaking of that, 
That's also a reason why I decided to head in against this group of units because they have about 60, maybe 70 units available for us to rescue. And I think that that is a pretty fantastic thing for us to get and uh, hopefully we'll be able to capitalize on it and whoa okay I th that was a little bit uh, oh, there's a little bit of a, a lag spike there because I thought to myself oh no no don't crash I've barely had any crashes in this version of Warsword Conquest it's been extremely stable with the exception of maybe like one or two crashes so I'm pretty happy with that uh, obviously I failed because I had a wind of magic roll of one but that's okay it's not a big deal Oh, I was actually going to turn this guy into being madness, you know, turn this guy to our, to our side, but it seems like that's not going to work. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's only 20 to go, and they're all coming in in dribs and drabs. They're not really showing any sign of unity whatsoever, but I suppose that's because their vassal is dead. All right, so uh, this is the end for them. There's only eight of them remaining. I just wanted to cut back so you could see how I got full HP back. I just used the healing potion. And we're going to tell our archers, everyone, just to charge straight on in here so we can finish this battle up a little bit quicker. It's actually pretty crazy now that I think about it. If you see all of these bodies strewn across the battlefield and you think to yourself, look at how much range our units have. There, there are people dead on the hilltop over there, and we were all the way over there by those uh, those few units in the in the distance that is insane the amount of distance that our uh, our units have their range is certainly very enviable indeed oh look at this look at this what do we have here it seems like we rescued a chaos uh, chaos vassal by the looks of things that is pretty amazing as you can see most people are pretty happy oh i gained reputation well, gaining reputation is not exactly great, let's face it, because we, you know, took a look at what reputation actually means in the previous episode. And uh, gaining reputation, that's not exactly what we want. We want something a little bit more on the evil side, if at all possible, but... Uh, well, what can you do? Anyway, there's a huge amount of Slanesh units here, and uh, I obviously, once again... I do know a little bit about the Chaos Gods and so on, but uh, I don't really know that much. And it's it's very cool actually to see that Slanesh has his own units or her her own units. I I have no idea about uh, specifics in that regard, but anyway, point is it's cool that they're they're actually real units in the game now because I believe that beforehand we had just corn. Corn units, I think that's all we had previously in a previous version. Maybe, I think we had Nurgle as well, but that's basically it, I think. And I think now with the new version, a lot of the gods are being represented much better. And I think that's actually kind of cool because, as I've said before, I feel like if you're playing Chaos, that uh, someone actually said that if you... If you uh, if you go with Nurgle or uh, yeah I think it, I think it is Nurgle yeah if you go with Nurgle as a, as a god and then you use the magic of Nurgle you can become an extremely difficult to kill unit and I think that's that might be something that I'm gonna go for when I do create my chaos character and uh, I think actually someone someone mentioned when am I actually going to be creating that chaos character well I I don't know I uh, I really don't know. That is uh, completely honest there. I have no idea. I really don't because I'm having a lot of fun with Slythe at the moment and uh, I hope many of you are as well. It seems like it at the very least because a lot of people are you know, giving me suggestions and commenting in general and it just seems very, very uh, like an enjoyable series for everyone. And uh, I, I like that a lot, you know, I like that a lot. Anyway, as you can see right here, I, put, I did put Katya at the very bottom because I did really do not want her to get eliminated any further. She's getting eliminated way too much, in my opinion. And wow, these Nurgle Knights, they look extremely menacing. That is really, really cool. And whoa, okay, okay. So these Slaneshi Marauder Berserkers become demonettes? I'm not entirely sure how that happens. Let me actually just take a look at the demonettes if I actually have some of those. Oh, I actually did get an es Eshen Assassin. That's pretty cool from that. Then we do have a Slaneshi Knight as well. That is kind of amazing. Well, these are huge. These guys are really, really massive. And uh, no wonder they're very intimidating when they get on the battlefield. Look at that. Chosen of Slanesh. I mean, I gotta say, 
I feel kind of sorry for anyone that really wants to besiege Karak Hearn now because all of these units are going to be going up against them and it's going to be an utter bloodbath. I like I like the Plague Bearers actually. The Plague Bearers are actually really cool units in my opinion. They have not much offensive capability and they're not the greatest, but they do have a pretty unique model and they do tend to stay alive for a very long time and I think that's that's a really cool cool attribute to have. Anyway, there's the demonettes. So they they level up from those big guys. It's kind of weird, but okay. Sure, I'll take it. Why not? If you want to have an army of, of demons and so on, then I, I guess that's a pretty cool idea. Otherwise, let's just continue. There we go. That's it. All right, so I now have an army entirely of Skaven and a couple of Dark Elves thrown in there. But otherwise, that's it. I believe. I think that is it. And we do have a couple of people that did level up. Ugluck leveled up, obviously, as well. We do need to get him a shield. But getting him a shield right here is kind of pointless, in my opinion, because they're just... They're not very good. I, I should really get him a Chaos Shield or something like that, because that would fit his size, certainly. Anyway, let's sell a couple of things. Oh, that's actually a pretty nice shield. Look at that. 140 size? That's kind of amazing. Maybe I should... Uh, maybe I should use that myself. That might make the most sense. Look at that, 140 size, 774 durability. That's kind of amazing. I'm going to use that. And we're going to sell the remaining little bit that we have there. Any food? Oh, they do have a couple of pieces of food. As you can see, I'm not doing extremely well in the food department because obviously Carrick Hearn is not getting a huge amount of caravans incoming to it. Anyway, let's see. Where is Ugluck? There he is. Hello. Oh, yes, you're a very handsome man, aren't you? Well, he's not, he's not technically a man, I suppose. Anyway, let's give him that, uh, <laughs> my old shield. And, uh, yeah, the, his armor isn't even, uh, isn't even really difficult to wear. Don't know the required skills to wear it. I actually wanted to see how, what I'd look like with that, with that armor on. That's pretty crazy. Anyway, let's go into his skills. Okay, so what are we going to be specking him into? He has just such a huge amount of strength that we don't need to, we don't need to level that up at all. I guess intelligence... Intelligence might be a good thing to go for, so why not? Why don't we do that? And um, I guess we could just go for power strike or something like that. I mean, yeah, I guess. I mean, he doesn't have a huge amount of power strike, and it would kind of make sense, you know, make him hit even harder than he already is. And then, of course, we have one of our early dark health units here, and I'm just going to give him an, a, an additional point of strength and a little bit of weapon master. I think we'll probably create a crossbow slash firearm user. Not entirely sure which one, probably. Probably crossbows. Anyway, there you go. All right, so we have taken out a whole bunch of wood elves, and this is exactly the reason why I wanted to eliminate those guys, because they were all around this area, and I wanted to engage them before the king himself turned up. And you can see here that he actually has about 37 units in his army well, 37 prisoners, should we say, in his army to be rescued. I don't exactly know whether I really want to go in against this guy, because I think he's probably going to have some pretty amazing, unique units, maybe? Mm, I'm taking a look at his, at his list, and he doesn't seem to have that much, but I think for the moment I'm not really in any shape to be taking on the king of an enemy faction, and it was just a shame that I was not able to take any of those Wood Elves prisoner, because their ransoms usually get us about five to six thousand. And good job. Way to prove me wrong, game. Very good. Yes. So, they, okay, four to six thousand. I'll, I'll, I'll modify my, my statement <laughs> slightly. Anyway, there you go. Three thousand nine hundred. Pretty good. And uh, yeah, actually, the Wood Elves are not doing extremely well. They're doing okay. I mean, they haven't really done much. But the Skaven, by the way, have taken a big bite out of the proverbial cheese of the Bretonians, and you can see here that they have taken Brion, which I wanted them to take when I was a mercenary of theirs, and a vassal of theirs, and uh, Quinell they've also taken, so that's obviously a thing. And uh, I'm hoping that they're going to be taking more and more and more, and hopefully then the Skaven will not declare war against us at some point. I am pretty sure they will, because... Their culture demands it, but otherwise, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess we'll just wait here for some time and see what we can do next. Well, this is an interesting situation we have on the outside of Karak Hearn at the moment. I was just waiting here, just, you know, regenerating my HP, like you do, and, uh, well... The wonderful denizens of the Empire have turned up, and, uh, well... 
They're not being very friendly to us, are they? No, they're not being very friendly at all, and they have begun a siege once again. They haven't come with all of their vassals this time around. I don't think they've come with too many. I think we'll probably be able to defend against this attack reasonably well. I don't think they are bringing as many as they did beforehand. And so that's going to give us a really, really good chance. Ah, there we go. Our messenger post has now been completed. And so that means... Where do I... Where do I actually go for that? I thought it was here? Huh. Oh, maybe I can't do it because it's under siege at the moment. Oh, that's kind of a shame. Oh, well, never mind. We are going to have to get the next piece of infrastructure being built reasonably quickly after the siege has ended. And the siege will end. Don't worry about that. Oh, are they already going in? No, no, they're actually fighting one of our caravans. Isn't that wonderful of them? They're just trying to reduce every single bit of income that we have. And it seems like a couple of their vassals did actually run off. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, but maybe they're being attacked from some other distance, or some other, some other uh, area. And, uh, well, I guess it's a, it's a waiting game once again. Okay, well, on the bright side, we are getting 6,200 gold for Marius here, and uh, we're going to be accepting that. On the bad side of things, however, our wages this week were negative 2,000. So that is not very good, but otherwise we're going to be accepting this offer. These guys are still here, they are still doing their thing in terms of uh, besieging us. I was actually thinking that maybe it would be an idea for... Ah, have they gone in now? No, they still have not gone in because they're still wanting to fight our caravans. Anyway, point is, as I was saying, there is actually someone here. I think it is the Arch Lector himself. He has over 300 units. And you can see here they have about, what is this now, 500, 700, and about 900, 950, about, about 1,000. They have about 1,000 units right here. You wouldn't think so with just, what, four or five vassals, but... Yes, those numbers do tend to add up after a while, don't they? Alright, so uh, I don't know what ha actually happened, but it was literally moments after I cut away previously, and it looks like the Empire has left once again. And you can see here, they, they is no longer under siege. I have no idea. I don't know why that happened, but they all ran away in this direction. And that makes me kind of think that maybe what I should do is run over here, and raid one of their villages. Ah, hello there. There they are. The Arch Lector himself is running away and uh, going somewhere. I have no idea where he's going, but who am I to stop him? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and raid one of their villages. Oh yes. Now if they do decide to turn around and come and fight us, I welcome the challenge. I welcome the challenge, Arch Lector. I highly doubt you would be able to defeat me in battle, let's face it. <laughs> I'm, I'm completely talking out of nowhere right now. I, I, I personally feel like it might be a bit of an issue. Ah, Baldrick! Are you, are you here? <laughs> There's a reference for you. Anyway, Lord Blackadder is right there. And, uh, oh, look at this. This village looks very rich and prosperous. Not for long. Not for long. Let us loot and burn the village. Uh, actually, you know what we're going to do? Shall we chase after the remaining villagers and enslave them? Because someone said that actually does give you much more negative reputation. And right now, my main priority, at least for me, is to try and earn as much right to rule as possible. So let's try and do that. I don't actually exactly know how long that's going to take. But, uh, oh, there we go. We captured two villagers. Captured another two villagers. Okay. Oh, hello. There's a, there's a, there's a vassal. Oh, there we go. That actually did not even take that long. We captured six, and you can see here that our reputation, or not our reputation, but our relation with those guys, uh, well, yeah, with, with the Empire and the uh, the vassal that has this village, has decreased. On your orders, your troops rampage through the village, dragging peasants from their hovels and stripping them of all possessions. In the span of a few hours, you've rounded up six. <laughs> six? Really? Just six? Leaving the infirm and the younglings behind. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I deserted it. Right, so... What's my reputation like now? Ah, okay, so I, do, I just took a very quick look at the... Ah. Oh. Thanks, I appreciate your support. Mm, I think one of our companions just said that they really like enslaving people. <laughs> I think so. Anyway, uh, yeah, I took a look at the character panel. 
and we have minus 21, minus 21 relations. So I am going to try and do something again to try and give us even more negative reputation. And if we can try and get about 50, maybe even more than that, then I think we'll be in a really, really good position to start gaining right to rule over time. As we are in a pretty defensive turtling position right now, it might make the most sense, even though if I do take a, uh, an offensive hostile action here, even though plundering the village, that might still be okay. I mean, yeah, chasing after the remaining villagers and enslaving them, I think I get about minus 10 for that, but I have no idea how much I get for plundering the village. So I'm going to plunder the village this time and, uh, you know, get, get a little bit of money. You know, getting some money is always a good idea. And who's that? Yeah, there's someone, but they were a bit too late. And, uh, oh yeah, give me that. Oh yes, that is what we want. We want all of this stuff. Thank you. Very nice indeed. I actually have a pretty decent amount of inventory management as well, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, should I take everything, actually? I guess I could. Why not? And we are very close to the vampire town, so I'm actually going to go and do that, and then we'll see how much we're going to get from selling. Oh. Looting is just a fact of life, isn't it, Captain? Some people kick up a fuss about it, but so many lords do it, so why shouldn't we? Ah, yes, Ugluck. Ugluck is very much in favor of attacking villages and making peasants pay by the looks of things. All right, so from all of the loot that we gained, I'm getting 10,000 here, and uh, unfortunately, I did not lose any reputation so it seems like enslaving is probably the only way that we can lose reputation or at least something along those lines oh hello there skeezel yes please join me thank you very much and uh yeah we're actually gonna be speaking to skeezel right now and we're gonna actually ask him if he can go off and get me some right to rule that would be kind of nice wouldn't it anyway Let's see what else we can do here. Okay, so we have... I'm basically doing this by myself, because I have no idea where Lord Measles is. It feels like Lord Measles is just kind of standing in Karakur, not really doing anything. And I'm kind of surprised about that, because I did give him a castle which has miraculously been untouched by enemies. Not entirely sure what's going on with that. It only has about 60 in the garrison there, last I checked. And it seems like I'm the only one doing anything to, uh, well, weaken the Empire. I, I don't exactly know. It, are there any people at war against uh, at war against the Empire right now? I actually have no idea, but I guess we'll take a look at that a little bit later on. Oh, hello. Uh, he, he's another Elector Count. Are you just ignoring me? Maybe. Oh, attack the... Ba <laughs> Ugh. Attacking the bandits. Okay, so I could technically attack the bandits or I could just move on. I'll probably just move on here because let's face it Why do I want to help them and then raid them? That doesn't really make sense So let's see if I can level up a couple of other people here I do want to get some storm vermin So I'm gonna have to look up on the troop tree how to get those storm vermin because I, for some reason I've been uh, upgrading a whole bunch of different unit paths and they don't seem to lead to the storm vermin so we're gonna have to do that anyway let's chase after the remaining villagers i don't exactly know how long this really takes i think it takes about what eight hours or something like that oh there we go the wood elves are giving us another 5100 very good happy with that and yeah just in time very good all right that is fantastic okay so yeah just in time before the general appeared and uh, pretty happy with what we were able to do there. And uh, I guess we can just continue to go from village to village and uh, try to enslave as many people as possible. Although there are a couple of vassals in the area, so that is obviously kind of annoying. But we're going to try our best. Uh, it's still infested by bandits. Oh well, let's go over here, shall we? This might be a little bit more deserted than the sort of center areas. So going to some of the areas along the outskirts might be the key to what we want to do. Oh, hello dwarves. I don't think you want to fight me right now. I'm not in a very good mood, so <laughs> yes, they obviously don't care too much about that. Anyway, so let's uh, let's do it again. Let's go and enslave them once more. Let's just continue enslaving as much as possible until we get to about minus 50 reputation, or at least I'm going to try to do that as much as possible. Oh, I have a bad feeling, you know, that Lucini is about to be besieged. You know what, though? 
I actually just took a look at my uh, character panel once again, and I still have minus 21 reputation. And I'm not entirely sure why that is, because I've been enslaving people, doing evil acts and everything. And I know, I know, when you do evil acts, you don't necessarily get penalized as much because you're an evil character. So I'm not entirely sure how to earn negative relation, but I guess we'll try and figure that out as we go. If you want to make an impression upon those who hold power, then don't send Felix as your envoy. He bores me to tears, and I can tell you that I'm not the only one who he has that effect on. What? what? Felix? I didn't send out a person called Felix. I send out Skeezel. He seems like he's getting things a little bit mixed up. Anyway, that will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.